Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Power Options, Radioactive Trading, Power Options Applied, Open Discussion, Open Forum presentation for the first Friday of December, December 3rd, 2010. It's good to see you all here today. Thank you for joining me. Before we go into our standard Q&A formats and uh, discuss some of the processes and procedures from this evening, I am going to take about 10 or 15 minutes of your time to just discuss something that's been coming up with a lot of our customers at options, uh, Power Options, I should say, um, over the past few days. As many of you may know, on November 29th, uh, let's see here, let me, oh, I apologize, let me maneuver over here. That's where I wanted to go. On November 29th, Options Express announced that it was going to pay a special dividend of $4.50 per share uh, to shareholders on record as of the 13th of December. Now, uh, this may sound like a good idea. You might think that there are a lot of opportunities where you can use options, for example, uh, to lock in a guaranteed profit and still receive the dividend. Why are you... Hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm showing some issues here, and I apologize for that. Let me change that up. One second. I apologize for that. I was showing both screens. Did not mean to. Much better now. We're just showing the one screen. Fantastic. So what I wanted to talk about today is why there is no free money transactions, either using options or using stock positions, when a special dividend is paid. Many of you might know this. Uh, some of you may have questions about it, but we're going to review it. We're going to try to only take up five or ten minutes of our time going over the discussion on the special dividends. Now, as we mentioned, the situation, a stock is going to pay a one-time dividend, might be a very high dividend, um, could be maybe one-fifth or one-fourth of the current stock price, and the shareholders on record will receive that special dividend, the dividend payment. Now, there are no free money opportunities. When a special dividend is paid of this type, the stock price is going to be lowered based on the amount of the dividend, and the option prices are going to adjust as well. And the current situation with Options Express, when they announced their dividend on November 29th of $4.50, the stock was trading at about $17.30 at around $17.50. So this is almost one, you know, one quarter, one-fifth of the current stock price. So essentially this is going to be, this is going to be treated just as a, almost a four-to-one or a five-to-one split uh, on a stock. Now, the specifics of the Options Express dividend. Um, the record date to be on hold, uh, to be on record, excuse me, of owning shares of stock is going to be December 13th. The one-time dividend payment is 450, and the announcement was released on November 29th. When the special dividend is paid, when it's released on the 28th, shares of Options Express are going to adjust. They're going to drop by about 450. Now, the option strike prices are going to adjust as well. So, if you were in a position, a covered call. Married put, collar spread, bear call credit, bull put credit, calendar spread, for example, uh, using the series that are going to be affected by the dividend, the total position value that you had before the dividend is going to equal your total position value after the dividend. Of course, to take advantage of the dividend, you'd probably want to buy shares of stock. But if we're assuming that the stock price is going to lower, everyone knows that the stock price is going to lower by 450. Um, on around December 28th, when the dividend's paid, is this a bearish play? Well, not necessarily. If you short the stock, the stock is going to drop $4.50 from the, uh, you know, wherever you shorted it, but you're going to have to pay the dividend. If you purchase a put option, expecting the put value to increase as the stock drops, the problem here is the put strike is going to adjust. So if I purchased a put option with a 1750 strike, expecting the stock to drop $4.50 in the near future, and I'd have an intrinsic gain of $4.50 on my put, the problem here is that once the dividend is paid, my 1750 strike is going to adjust to a 13 strike. So I don't have the right anymore to force someone to uh, buy shares of stock at 17 and a half. I now have the right to force someone to buy shares of stock at 13. It's mainly going to affect the January 2011 and February 2011 option series. Well, is it a bullish play then? Well, not necessarily. If we purchase the stock, we're going to be able to receive the dividend when it's paid on December 28th, but the stock price is immediately going to drop $4.50 from the price of where it's at on that day. 
Now it can be profitable if we have a lower cost basis than the stock price before the payment date. For example, when the stock, uh, I'm sorry, when Options Express released this announcement on November 29th, the stock was trading at about 1730 at about 1750. It closed today at about $19.09, so it's already moved up 8% from when they announced the dividend, 8.6% roughly. Um, so if the stock price is higher from your purchase price when the dividend is paid, that can still be considered a bullish position. It can still be, it's going to be a profitable position, that's true. But you just have to remember that the cost basis is going to adjust by the dividend amount. Now, of course, if you buy a call, the stock's going to drop, uh, the stock's going to drop in price but the strike price of your call is also going to adjust. Okay, so what's the obvious solution? Well, maybe the obvious solution is a married put position. I buy stock to make sure that I receive the dividend. I have to own stock to receive the dividend. And then I'm going to buy a put to protect against that $4.50 drop in price. Hmm, well, is that going to work? Well, no, because we are going to own the stock. We are going to receive the dividend but the put strike price is going to adjust at that point as well. So the market value of my position before the dividend is going to equal the market value after the dividend as well. Let's take a look at a quick example here. The closing prices as of 12-3, uh, as of today, 12-3-2010, I could theoretically go out, buy shares of stock at Options Express for 1909 and buy a January 2011 20 put for about $1.45. So my total investment into the position stock plus put would be $20.54. My guaranteed exit price is $20. I'm able to sell or close my shares of stock at $20 by the insurance policy of the put, so I'm only risking $0.54 cents or 2.3% of the total position. Now what is the expectation? Well, I've purchased stock, so I'm going to receive the dividend. I bought this put. So I'm going to be able to sell to close my shares of stock at $20 after the dividend is paid. I collect $450, stock drops to $1459, and I sell the stock at $20. Well, that's not correct, because as soon as I receive that $4.50 dividend, my 20 strike put is going to adjust to a $15.50 strike on December 28th. The purchase price is still $1.45 for the put, so I still have $1.45 plus my original cost basis into the position. Now what we'd be looking at is stock at about $14.59 and a strike price of $15.50. So remember the original position cost would be $20.54. After the dividend was paid, what we would see is we'd have long shares of stock trading at $14.59. We did have $1.45 for the purchase price of the put. So total adjusted stock price where it's trading right now plus my price for the put is $16.04. Now, instead of having a 20 strike, we have a 1550 strike. So our new total at risk is 54 cents. It's the same as it was before. It's the 1604 value minus 1550. Of course, now the value of the position, we have this stock, and we, I'm sorry, we have the stock roughly at 1459. We paid $1.45 for the put. So our new accounting would have us with a cost basis of 1604, and we received the $4.50 dividend. So we still have a market value of roughly twenty fifty four. Now, the trick here is, of course, the put might not be priced at $1.45. We might not be able to liquidate that put for $1.45 as some of the time value would have decayed out of it. Okay, so that's kind of a trick there, too. All right? But the market value stays the same. Once the dividend is paid, it's, it's going to be treated just as uh, one of those ratio splits, for example. The strike prices are going to adjust. And uh, if you have a call or if you have a put, and the stock's going to lower as well. Now, for the January and February 2011 calls and puts on OXPS after the dividends paid on 1228, here's what we'll see. Um, the existing strike right now, the 1250 call, the 1250 put, is going to adjust to an $8 strike. The $15 strike on the February January call or put will be adjusted to the 1050. The 17 and a half strike will adjust to a 13. The 20 strike will adjust to a 1550 and the 22 and a half will adjust to an 18 strike. I think there are also some far out June options. I have an expiration of 6 18 2011 uh, that will also be adjusted as well. Now, this is not a recommendation, a warning, or advice to buy or not buy, to invest in or not to invest in Options Express before or after the special dividend. We just want to make you aware 
that the options are going to adjust as well. There's no free money opportunities. Um, so, you know, if you're buying a put expecting the stock to drop, your rights and requirements, let's say, of selling that stock or uh, having a 20-strike put after the dividend is paid is going to adjust down to uh, the 1350s, I'm sorry, the 1550 uh, strike put. So it's going to adjust with the stock. So we're not making any recommendations. Um, we want you to do your own research and analysis, decide if options expressed in the special dividend is the right way for you to invest or not to invest. But for all the questions that we had during this week, we just wanted to touch upon the idea that you can't use the options to manipulate this because they're going to be adjusting in strike prices and their uh, requirements and obligations as well. Okay. All right, so I just wanted to spend 10 minutes on that to clear that up um, in case anyone had any questions. If you already knew this and you didn't have any questions, well, just a little review for you. Let us move on now back to our normal presentation, which you uh, all, of course, came here for. Let me just make sure I've got the right screen up, and there we go. Okay, so my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. Um, I've been with Power Options for eight years. I uh, handle a lot of the coaching sessions in education. I've co-authored two books with Ernie, and I am versed in all 23 different strategies that we have available on Power Options. Now, the processes and procedures for the rest of today's Q&A open forum, open discussion presentation. So I want you to use the question pod uh, to pose a question you might have about options, um, option strategies, using the Power Options tools, uh, using some of the different strategies or techniques that uh, we offer and we educate as well. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. We may not have time to answer all of the questions, uh, but we've, um, we're going to stay and make sure that we get through all of them as best we can. Questions, of course, can be about the tools and power options, uh, the radioactive trading techniques, power options applied, general options strategy, general options education, general market questions as well. Feel free to ask anything that's uh, on your mind. Now, just have some basic ground rules. We've never had a problem with this before, but we always like to mention it. We just ask that you have respect for all attendees and presenters. Um, if there's consistent negative behavior, it will not be tolerated, and uh, you'll be asked to leave. But I just have that in there as a disclaimer. We've never had that problem before. Please be patient. There may be a couple questions ahead of yours, um, so I'm going to try to answer all the questions, as I mentioned. Uh, and feel free, please, feel free to help us help others. Um, if I'm answering a question, someone asks a question about a covered call or a specific strategy, and uh, I'm answering the question based on my market experience, but your market experience is entirely different, I'd love for you to use the question pod and share that with me, and then I'll share it with the rest of the group as well. Uh, so feel free to help me help everyone else online. Most important, hey, it's Friday. It's the first Friday of December, getting close to the uh, Christmas holidays, the New Year's holidays. So let's just have some fun, get some good education in today and then start off on the right foot to enjoy the rest of our weekend. All right, I'm going to navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools. I'll go ahead and ask everyone to start queuing up your questions that you might have. <laughs> 